Yo, what's good, dev guys? Welcome to part two. Uh, we're inside of Unreal Engine. I'm gonna show you how to import the mesh correctly, uh, import the textures, set up the textures, and uh, set up this master material that will allow us to create material instances from it. Um, I'll leave a link to the mesh inside of the description of this video so that you can follow along with me here. I already have this mesh inside of my project, but I'm gonna start from scratch to show you how to import it correctly. And man, if you use this in your game, man, please link me or something, cause, uh, or just let me know. Uh, I mean, I won't be using this in my final game, but it, it's good to know that people are using my assets. Let's me makes me feel good about actually being a person that creating assets. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and import our textures to this folder that I created. I just created a YouTube folder here to bring everything in from this tutorial. And then the next thing I'm gonna import is the mesh. You'll find this in the link. Uh, so wherever you extracted that, uh, go ahead and find it. And it's pistol game. So for these settings, uh, I, I set mine to a skeletal mesh because it, it works better as a skeletal mesh uh, when you're using weapons. And another thing I changed is instead of compute normals, we don't want Unreal to compute the normals. We want to import the normals that we created or that I created inside of Houdini. And last but not least, make sure you have do not create material and uh, import textures. Make sure you got that ticked off and everything else should be fine. Go ahead, import all. Control Shift S, make sure it saves. And now we're gonna create our own material. We're gonna call this pistol master underscore mat. And double click to open that. And I want to shift click these, but first I need to set these up properly. So your um, your AO, your occlusion, roughness, metallic, your ORM map, Go ahead and double click in it and set it to not be sRGB. The same thing with the um, the mask that we created. It needs to be a linear color. So make sure you have that ticked off right there. And you want to shift click these and just drag them up to our material here. We'll get the base set up and then we'll start adding all the lerp nodes and the multiply nodes that we need to get everything going. So. This is our ORM. So red goes into ambient occlusion, green goes into roughness, blue goes into metallic. I'm gonna drag this over here because we're not gonna change that again. Our normal map goes into our normal. Drag that over here, not gonna change it again. And we need to set this, oh, it's already set the linear color. Okay, so our base albedo map it needs to be multiplied against a series of lerps from these masks that we created in order to basically multiply the color on top of the mask and override this base material. That's also why we set this base material as a as a flat. And if I go to my um if I go ahead and click on my mesh and come back in here and click this teapot, I'm gonna focus in on that, press F. We set this material to be basically a, a gray palette. So it's it's almost a clear, clean palette that we use here. So um, yeah, with that, what we wanna do, and just to see how this works, we can uh, multiply this. We don't wanna actually multiply it by this texture. We wanna lurk from this texture to our uh, color of choice here. And uh, so what we're gonna do is press three or actually press V because we wanna create a, a parameter. Uh, so we're gonna call this the shiny, shiny metal color. And we are going to lerp from our texture to our color and we're going to use our green channel which is the shiny metal we're going to use our green channel as the alpha so if we plug this into the multiply you'll see 
our uh, since this color is black, it is adding is making this this darker. But if I go in here and I, as a matter of fact, I need to turn the alpha up. So first, let's make this a vector three. We don't want to deal with alpha. We want everything to be solid color. So make that a vector three, right click on it, and then convert it to a parameter, and then call it shiny metal color. Oh, it, it does the same thing, but at least it keeps the alpha at one. So I don't have to recreate the alpha every time. So let's set this to a color that we want to see maybe blue. Oh, that's still black. So blue. Press OK. Now you see, oh, shit, this is the dark metal. OK, so the shiny metal is actually the red. So let's uh, pull in the right channel here. Now you see we get that nice blue coming in on our shiny metal. Now we want to copy these notes, control W, and let's name this dark metal color. And we want to lerp from this to our color. And let's unplug that. That's just so we can visualize. And now we want to use the green channel as the alpha. And we're gonna do this in order because the way that these textures work is they work from the top down. So if I did this out of order, some uh, parts of the texture would show through on parts that it's not supposed to. So we do it in order from red to green to blue to alpha. And um, keep on, keep it on. We're gonna copy these, highlight them, press control W. And we're gonna rename this to our grip color. And we're gonna lerp from here to our grip color using the blue channel as the alpha. And finally, for our, for our emissive color, it's a little bit different. We want to lerp from this texture. Actually, no, we don't. Let's create these two nodes right here. So control W. We want to lerp from black to our color because we want everything else that's not a part of this emissive channel to be black. And if, if I if I drop down on here, you can see everything is black and our emissive, wherever our emissive is showing up, it has a color. And then we want to multiply this by a value that we're gonna set as another parameter. So press one, that's how I did that. Press one, make a, 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 a parameter or a scalar float. And we'll right click this and convert it to a parameter. And we're gonna call this emissive intensity. We're gonna plug this into here, default the value to 10. And that's pretty much how you set this up. So you lerp from your main, your main albedo and you plug that into the the alpha the what will be the the from channel and you want to lerp to this color using this uh selected channel from the uh color mask as a uh alpha mask and so if we plug this in right here if we plug this into the multiply You'll see we got a completely blue uh, weapon here and something's a little bit weird there. Um, so let me plug in this emissive channel and see where we went wrong. So our emissive channel is, is good, but for some reason we're getting black right here. And I think that's because, yeah, that's something we did inside of Substance. So. Um, let me look at my mask for the dark metal and yeah, you can see I left out some pieces of the dark metal. So I need to go in here and go to mesh fill and reselect those pieces. And then, um, yeah, 
yeah that should do it so i'll file export this texture back out and i'll export it back out and the reason i say you want to have this in a folder that you can recognize and not just some random place on the desktop is just so i can just um right click on this and just re-import it and you'll see when i go into the material it fixed it uh it fixed that mass error that we had so press f to focus in on the mesh hold control and right click to zoom in like this where it's not all weird and now we have it to where we can pretty much edit this this um this material however we see fit so so let's go let's go ahead and control shift s and let's uh apply this material actually no we're not going to do that we're going to uh, right click on this and create a material instance and we're going to call this a uh let's call this our red red death skin and we'll put mi on the end now if we double click into this um our parameters aren't exposed what happened so we need to save this so that all of this information carries over now we can go into this and you'll see uh let's go ahead and bring in our mesh as well to the material instance press f to focus in and now we can adjust these values here so let's make this all the same color red make sure it's not pink but red i like that i like that fiery orange i like that so let's drag that up here so we can have it as a, a saved color that way we don't have to copy and paste and now we got a red skin for our pistol and you can create as many variations as you want and you're not limited to to having to keep going back into um uh substance painter and adding a different color palette and exporting back out to unreal and you can see if we can we look at the shader let's look at the can i look at shader complexity we look at the shader complexity it's all green baby so this is a very cheap shader and it's very dynamic at the same time. So uh, we did a good job when it comes to optimizing, when it comes to to agility, and, and um, being able to to dynamically create skins inside the engine. And this could be extended to do more things. Like you can bring in another mask that holds all of your um, wear and tear and you can uh, lerp a color you can lerp a color on top of those and then lerp into lerp th that information into this information and then you'll be able to adjust the scratches the dirt color the, uh, the intensity different things it's just so much information uh about this system and where i got the idea from this system is a, a an old video on youtube um it's called paragons character texture and pipeline uh it's 2017 they they created this and what they did is um uh, they basically created all of their materials inside of unreal for me i did a little bit different i created the materials and the roughness channels all that was done inside of substance and i just masked out and uh changed the colors but this system can get as deep as creating your materials in unreal and then applying those materials to those masks using material functions but that system is way too advanced for me right now uh, if i ever figure it out i definitely will try to do a dumbed down tutorial on it but definitely take a look at this video man this has a lot of good information on on uh just texturing workflows this is where i got the idea to do this system so uh I want to thank Epic for always letting us in on the secrets, man. Shit. Because where would I be without Epic Game? You dig what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so if this workflow helped your, help you out, if you if you found this as a new feature set that you want to add to your toolbox, uh, leave a like, leave a, leave a comment. Let me know that this helped you out. 
uh, maybe leave a sub for your boy. I'm at, I'm, I'm almost at 500, $500, uh, not $500 giveaway. Hell no, hell no. I'll, re I'll retract that. We're doing another uh, Amazon $50 gift card uh, giveaway when we reach 500 subscribers. So help me out on that end and maybe you can be a winner. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all I got. I appreciate you guys for stopping by, man. Peace.